That's our next focus this morning. We've got uh, Chukuma Ezeala, who is a legal practitioner. He's also observed several elections for mm. uh, some civil society groups, uh, the African Bar. He's here this morning to uh, weigh in into this ongoing matter about some clauses to be amended in the Electoral Acts. Thank you for coming on this morning. Mm. Thank you. And it's all towards ensuring free, fair, and credible elections. Well, let's start off with uh, that particular point where they talk about diaspora voting where uh, we had some of those who were making their submissions, they thought that, yes, it should be included. But if I remember properly, I think they say that they're not sure if that can happen in 2019 because some laws and things like that have got to be amended. You heard about that, haven't you? Yes, I've heard about that. Uh, but please, before I start, may I also lend my voice in sending my condolence to channels for the death of uh, Chukuma. Amerikosi. I say may his soul rest in peace. Uh, now going into the Thank matter you. at hand, it's important that we have the diaspora mm. uh, citizens participate in the elections mm. because in Nigeria today, mm. our citizens that are outside the country are many, and they are interested in our affairs. However. I would suggest that we can include it into the law in the amendment, but the timing should not be made, you know, to start immediately. Because if the electoral body is not ready, of what mm. use? You ask them to go into it when they are not ready, they go and mess it up. How easy is it to get uh, the, the, da the data sum of Nigerians living outside of the country? I mean, we have the, um, uh, the passports, and that could serve very well to identify who is eligible and is outside of Nigeria and can vote. Isn't that just so simple that INEC can incorporate into its scheme? No, it's, it's, uh, it looks simple. But remember that they will have to... When somebody is leaving Nigeria, there is actually no registration of where he is going as such. So the people will have to go to the embassy or to designated areas to register or register online. So... Now that we have not, except we are saying give them electronic voting and continue with our own, with our own manual voting, or everything goes electronic. Otherwise, it's still going to be a challenging thing. In other countries where they do um, diaspora voting, like United States that do it, and then UK and many, and some others in Europe, right? they, they already have, like United States knows the number of citizens that are here in Nigeria, for instance, and in any other country. And they have a way of communicating with their embassy. As we are speaking today, our embassies are disconnected from Nigerians in various countries where they are. Mm -hmm. At least when you, when you call any of your relations and find out, does the embassy know you are staying here? The answer is no. So it's going to be a challenge to start with. But it's a process. And we think by the time we are moving, more people that are interested in that voting will come into the net. But we, it's not like we are, we are going to keep it at bay. The INEC should start working on such. I know two years will not be very easy for them to get ready for it. But at least in the next voting, they should be incorporated into At least those of them that want to vote should be able to connect to the, to the embassy or to any designated area and be ready to vote. For you, what, what area would you consider the most critical that needs to be amended now that we're looking at this very subject? Uh, well, yes, I, I think the diaspora voting issue should be included, but time not to be there. That is, insisting it's going to be 2019 should not be there. And I also think that there are a whole lot of things to be included. Just for instance, the giving INEC voter registration, you know, voter education. Over time, we have seen that if there is budget for it, they hardly use it. Or when they use it, it's, it's, it's not been used to the optimum. Second is the prosecution of electoral fraud or electoral malpractices. Because most times, the malpractices are coming from INEC officials. Mm -hmm. And what if it comes from raising the electoral commissioner or even from the INEC chairman? How will you punish the person or how will you prosecute? So that is why I think that we should have independent prosecutors. 
and the appointment should actually be removed from politics. Appointment uh, from of who? Political. The independent prosecutors? Yes, of independent prosecutors who, who for electoral be? matters. Police officers or who? No, no, no. We have attorney general as a general prosecutor in the country. Mm -hmm. We can appoint independent prosecutors. And we have office of independent prosecutor. Okay. Now, the question because there are, there are what process do you use in appointing and removing the same person? Because remember that the person may have to prosecute the ruling party. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I see two things from what you said. The first part is the offense which you say in some cases come from the electoral officials. Yes. Now, the amendments that is going on, are there any, or don't you think that most of those amendments will perhaps checkmate the possibility of anyone, let alone electoral officials, being the ones committing those offenses? No, you, you know, if there is no um, possibility or great chances of apprehending and prosecuting, whatever well, amendment you have on paper will just be there. No, the laws are there. What about, I'm trying to see, is, isn't it possible for us to first of all say, look, we want to reduce your chances of doing that first yes. to help us reduce the headache of having to apprehend so many people and not be able to prosecute. Today, with the system we have, the chances are really reduced. If you say you do, if you say that you, you know, the, ty the, the type of electronic voting we're already doing, that the one called electronic do. voting. <laughs> because, no, no, because no, 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 it's not electronic, <laughs> but the type of voting we are having okay. today is a form of electronic voting really because when you come the accreditation you do the electronic but you know the law you know, the voting. law doesn't see it as electronic voting even if it it because, uh, yeah, yes. it's not even admissible in court yeah. you have issues concerning that no no it is admissible in court now because it is admissible in court the problem is that it has continuously failed us so it was what INEC brought in as an innovation 